from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi there. Good morning. It is Tuesday. It is February 7th. Thanks for joining us and this morning's been like a little warm compared to most mornings, so not too bad out there. We've seen a little bit of drizzle before sunrise and now that the sun is up, it's a gray day out there and we're seeing a few showers on radar. Justin. Yeah, we are. We're starting to see a little bit more activity. I think as the day wears on, you're going to see more on the radar, more showers and then by tonight, a pretty decent chance for some showers and storms. So don't be surprised if you hear a few claps of thunder. Let's get right to the satellite picture and radar. Notice there's not a lot around San Antonio right now so things really are pretty quiet but I think by midday and especially the afternoon we'll start to see more of these showers you can see some of those north of us north of Fredericksburg and that is along a frontal boundary which will be sinking into the area later tonight uh, and uh, bringing that rain with it there it is uh, San Angelo over to Waco more rain there as you head up by 35 here's a look outside we've got cloudy conditions and we're not expecting to see the sun today as I said more on the radar this afternoon when it comes to those showers that front is expected around 9 p.m. this evening and then once the front moves through right along the front and behind it we're expecting some thunderstorms. So chances overnight into early tomorrow could be a little bit of a wet commute on your Wednesday. 67 right now and cloudy. South southeasterly winds at about 14 and those winds will be gusty today. So 68, 11 o'clock, 69 noontime. We start to bring the rain chances up. Notice temperatures don't move that much. So we'll call for a high of 71, a 40% chance of showers around 3 to 4 o'clock. But as we get into tonight, we'll up the chances to 60, even 70% by 8 p.m. with some of those uh, chances for some thunderstorms. More on this forecast, how much rain we could receive. That's coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Let's look out there with Trans Guy. Not too many problems. Here's a look at Loop 410 at Fredericksburg. Uh, kind of a slowdown, but it's the usual slowdown in this area. And as far as we know, just a few disabled vehicles around town. And let's take the entrance ramp to today's 9 at 9. More than 5,000 people are reported dead after the most devastating earthquake in the century hit Turkey and Syria. The weather is hampering the frantic search for survivors trapped beneath the rubble of thousands of buildings and aftershocks continue to rattle the nerves of those left homeless. Andre McDonald was sentenced to 20 years in prison Monday for the death of his wife, Andrine, back in 2019. He was originally on trial for murder, but the jury found him guilty on the lesser charge of manslaughter. McDonald will be eligible for parole in seven and a half years. President Biden is putting the final touches on his State of the Union address, one of the biggest speeches of his presidency set to be delivered before a joint session of Congress tonight. It comes amid a standoff with Republicans over raising the nation's debt ceiling, and as polls show majority of Americans do not approve of the job he's doing as president. We will air the president's remarks beginning at 8 p.m. Sources say the Senate and House are scheduled to hold separate classified briefings on the suspected Chinese spy balloon on Thursday. The balloon was shot down over the weekend. President Biden says the takedown did not damage the U.S.'s relationship with China. The incident has revealed troubling gaps in U.S. intelligence gathering, raising concerns in Washington. Microsoft Outlook gradually getting back online this morning after some users were without their email last night. Outlook went down for several hours. The tech giant tweeted that, quote, a recent change is contributing to the cause of impact, end quote. Early this morning, Microsoft said there was gradual improvement in the situation, but that it was still working to restart operations more needed. Despite the Fed keeping up the drumbeat of interest rate hikes, the average rate for a 30-year fixed rate home loan is actually down nearly a full point from a high in November, and that may be helping drive more buyers back into the home market. Mortgage applications are up about a quarter since the end of last year. It looks like Bed Bath & Beyond will avoid bankruptcy. The Wall Street Journal says the chain has put together more than a billion dollars in money from investors to try and turn its business around. Google is rolling out BARD, a rival to Microsoft's ChatGPT, which can write essays and even pass law school exams. Google plans to roll out BARD to the public in the coming weeks after testing it with a small group. One ethicist is concerned about how fast the AI technology is developing. Among other problems, she points out that AI bots cannot separate truth from fantasy, so it could effectively spread misinformation. 
A big winner in Washington State, a single ticket matched all the winning numbers for last night's Powerball jackpot of over $754 million. The winner can choose an annuitized prize or a lump sum of $407 million. This is the fifth largest prize in Powerball history and the first Powerball jackpot win this year. And that's today's Nine at Nine. And your morning headlines, an ambulance in Houston stolen right out of a fire station bay in the middle of the day. And choice movie seats are going to cost you more. The party at the Super Bowl has started and like sands through the hourglass, these are the days of Tom Brady. David Sears is here with all of the stories. Well, just right out of a soap opera, right? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that worked or not. It but did. It worked. It has something yes. to do with sand and Tom Brady. I get it. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. We'll get to that in just a second. But first, let's start with this. That's an ambulance rolling down the streets of Houston. Lights are flashing. There's no patient inside. And the driver is not an EMT. That ambulance is stolen. Stay with me on this one. Okay, so here's where it all started. The suspect was at a grocery store supposedly helping a woman until he stole her car. He drove to the fire station, number 17 there in Houston, pulled in the parking lot, and then we'll let an eyewitness take it from there. We saw the, the gentleman pull in in a four-door sedan. He pulled right into the fire station's parking lot, jumped out, ran inside the open bay, jumped in the ambulance, and was gone within a minute. Gone. So there is surveillance video showing it all taking place. The GPS system on the ambulance not working. So at first it was hard to spot, but the police chopper finally got eyes on it along with Channel 11. Then the cops on the ground got in on the chase. The ambulance thief driving through neighborhoods on the highway. Police put out spike strips and that took care of the problem. A couple of flat tires later chase over. The suspect did hit another vehicle. Little damage. Everybody OK. Suspect arrested, charged with automobile theft and felony evading arrests. All right, so somebody at AMC theaters has been paying attention to the airlines. Some airlines charge more for aisle or window seats. Well, if you want a better seat at the theater, now it's going to cost you. So AMC now has new ticket price options. So your standard price, the most common one, those are going to be the same. Middle theater. Now these are the premium seats where you want to sit right in the middle. Those four, five, six seats. Those are are going to cost you a premium price. And then there's the cheap seats. Those are actually going to cost less. Those are the ones that are like down there in the front where you're doing this and you're watching, you're kind of watching the movie because you're on the front row and a big screen right in front of you and the neck breaker. So those new prices start Friday in New York and Chicago and Kansas City. The new options will hit all AMC theaters by the end of the year. Only two AMCs in San Antonio that I could find. I believe it's River Center and then there's one out in Bernie. So check your local listings. It is a major hype time at the Super Bowl. They just had the big opening night party. So far, one of the biggest stories coming out of this year's hype machine, Mama Kelsey. She is the mother of Travis Kelsey, who plays for the Chiefs. Jason Kelsey, who plays for the Eagles. She showed up at the Footprint Center in Phoenix with food. Apparently, one quarterback thinks he could challenge one of Mama's boys at his position, though. It's just amazing that they've been able to both get to this point in their careers. I would probably play tight end, and I definitely would be better than Travis. Ooh, come on now, Patrick. You're fine where you are. Hey, for those casual viewers who just really like the commercials during the Super Bowl, Anheuser-Busch will be the biggest advertisers for Sunday's big game between the Chiefs and Eagles. They bought three minutes of commercial time. 30 seconds of time is about $7 million. So Anheuser-Busch forked over some cash. And finally, speaking of the all-time greatest, Tom Brady made his retirement announcement. Remember this? This is his second one. It's supposed to be his last. He was on the beach when he made this announcement, and now you can have some of that sand for a price. You can get a bottle of the sand from his announcement spot on eBay for about 100 grand. There are other listings at prices anywhere from 10 to 33,000. He apparently made his announcement right there on a beach in North Miami. So but how do you know? I mean, couldn't you, could the staff just go to the beach and fill up a mason jar full of sand and say this is Tom Brady yep. sand? Right. Well, you could stay in a hotel, go get your own beach sand, and right. call it Tom Brady sand for less than what they're trying to charge you for getting it in a bottle and sending it to you. That's, that's kind of so, weird. And plus, you get, you know, time on, on the beach. You could just lay on the sand where Tom Brady I made know. his announcement and go, I'd rather wow, have something signed or for that yeah. money. Something. I'd get something like that, dude. I think so. So, hey, thank you, David. I don't know. We'll <laughs> see you in a bit. 907, 67 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9.
Burns can happen at any time, and most of the time they are preventable. That's why the American Burn Association started National Burn Awareness Week, which is observed the first full week of February. Next half hour, we'll be talking with a local doctor about the importance of the week and what we can do to keep ourselves and others safe. Plus, tickets for Beyonce's Renaissance Tour started going on sale yesterday for the first group of verified fans. What you need to know if you're planning on buying tickets and how Ticketmaster is handling the sale differently this time to avoid another fiasco like with Taylor Swift tickets. Welcome back to 911. Did you know the most requested item from deployed U.S. service members and even our veterans at VA hospitals is socks? Soldiers Angels has launched the Warm Feet for Warriors campaign and they are setting an ambitious goal this year. Max Massey joins us live from the Vet Center with more on this story. Max, good morning. What is that goal? Guys, we are talking tens and tens of thousands of socks hoping to get raised. I'm joined here with Amy. So, Amy, everyone watching, what is the goal this year? Um, our goal for Warm Feet for Warriors is to like, collect 75,000 pairs of socks. Is amazing. So what are we looking at here? So we actually have all kinds of socks that have come in from people that have collected. Um, we have actually bags of socks that have come in and some socks here today that have shown up. And we just started the campaign February 1st and they're already rolling in. That is amazing. So if anyone does want to step up and help out, how can they do so? They can go to our website at soldiersangels.org. There's a whole section on Warm Feet for Warriors, but for those here local to San Antonio, they can actually just stop in, drop off socks. They can volunteer to help us pack socks to get them to deployed and veterans all over the country. And so Mark had said it at first, you know, it's one of the most requested items. Why is it so important for our military men and women? They go through a lot of socks overseas. They get stinky and they're ready to throw them away. So it's great to give them um, socks that they can wear in uniform, but they also have a lot of downtime. So a lot of them exercise regularly. And so they like those socks of all the other varieties and colors and, and sizes and things too. Um, and of course, veterans that are hospitalized, you know, they're changing socks a lot as they're walking around uh, barefoot, uh, you know, in socks uh, at the hospitals. 75,000 is a lot of pairs of socks. What have you guys raised in previous years and, and why this large goal? You know, our goal has increased every year a little um, each year. And so last year we had hoped to get 50,000, but we exceeded that. So, you know, 75,000 is a little bit of a push, but um, we think we'll get there. Okay. I mean, taking a look around, all these donations already, it looks like you guys are off to a great start. How does this compare to previous years um actually we got a good kick on it this year um a lot of people coming off the holidays were looking for something to do so they've jumped right into the sock drive so our numbers already are, are higher than they normally are this time of year so we think we'll hit the goal that is amazing and one more time for me anyone watching right now we know san antonio military city usa we're gonna have people who want to step up and help out how exactly can they do that so they can go to our website at soldiersangels.org. There's information for Warm Feet for Warriors there, but they can also stop in our office to drop off socks or to volunteer with us here. Or they can buy them on Amazon wish list and send them directly to us. All right, Amy, thank you so much, guys. We're going to have so much more on this coming up on KSAT.com. And, of course, the news at noon. Mark, Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, Max. Let's go outside with live cam. Cold front is on the way. Let's get an ETA from meteorologist Justin Horn. That front should be here about 9 o'clock tonight. We can almost pinpoint it, but uh, right now it's, it's kind of cutting Texas in half. So there's some cold air up north, some warmer air where we are. The good news is this front's going to bring us some showers and storms overnight. Uh, may cause for some wet weather as you head off to work and school tomorrow. So let's uh, get right to the maps and show you exactly where it sits right now. Cutting right through San Angelo, Dallas, northwest of there. It's chilly, 43 in Lubbock, 34 in Amarillo, 56 in Abilene. This is not a big time cold front in the sense that it's going to bring a blast of cold air. It's not that, but it is going to give us the lift we need for some active weather later today. You see out ahead of it, we've got 60s and 70s, a lot of humidity too. So it's uh, the air is pretty thick out there. Here is uh, one reason that we're encouraged about rain chances. Not only do we have that front there, but we have a swirling low back out over parts of Arizona and New Mexico as that moves a little bit closer to us tonight. That plus the front should give us some good lift. And we're optimistic, optimistic about 
some decent rain numbers around here. Already seeing some rain across parts of the Red River, Oklahoma City, Wichita Falls, down towards Abilene, and then there's some snow on the back side of this in the higher elevations there in New Mexico. Ski resorts getting a lot of snow there. A little closer look, you can see some of the showers actually getting a little bit closer to Austin. This front's going to be slow moving, but I think by the afternoon you will see uh, more showers developing here around San Antonio. So let's look at the live radar right now, and you'll see there is not a lot there. Uh, we've seen a few showers maybe out towards Howitzville, and that's it. And in fact, we haven't seen a, a lot of drizzle this morning. There's been a few reports, but mostly it's been dry, just cloudy. And that's the scene we have outside right now. Cloudy skies and 67 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 63. We've got a good south southeasterly wind at about 14 miles per hour, ushering in all that moisture. So dew points will stay high uh, through much of today. Forecast 40% chance of rain at 3 o'clock. So as we get later into today, you'll start to see more showers developing on the radar. Mostly light stuff. But as we get towards, say, 7 o'clock, then we start to see some activity developing along this front. We're going to bring rain chances up at this point to around 60%. And then as the front begins to come through 10 o'clock, 9, 10 o'clock, I'd say that's probably our best opportunity for some showers and maybe a couple of storms. We're not looking for a lot of severe weather, uh, but there could be some rumbles of thunder mixed in here. And even behind the front, we'll still have some opportunities for rain. This is 5 a.m. tomorrow. Still a 50% chance of some pop-up showers and storms. So that's why we were talking about the morning commute. Could still be a little bit wet. 8 o'clock, mostly showers, I think, at this point. As things are a little bit cooler. And we're still seeing some of that rain linger through about midday before it finally moves east. And then we get some clearing late in the day on Wednesday. The sun tries to make an appearance by dinner time. As far as the severe weather risk, really it's uh, it's to our east. Uh, the Storm Prediction Center has kind of moved this around a little bit, but I think as far as um, any storms that may produce a little bit of hail or gusty winds, that's going to be out towards Gonzales, Cuero, Howitzville, something we'll watch as we get into tonight. Meantime, the rainfall, what are we looking at there? Well, I think there'll be some good numbers, especially as you get up towards New Braunfels and Austin, places that uh, certainly need some rain uh, around an inch there. I think here in San Antonio, we're talking about half an inch to an inch. And then as you go west, the numbers get lower, quarter of an inch out west of San Antonio, Hondo, Uvalde, west of there. Rain's going to be hard to come by, but uh, hopefully at least get a little bit out of this. And I want to show you the rainfall so far this year. You know, we're doing OK for the month of February. We're actually picked up 0.64. Uh, that's actually a little bit above average. And since January 1st, we're at 1.33. That's about an inch below. But if we could get some rain tonight, we could get caught up to the average. Obviously, we have a huge deficit to make up from last year. 60 degrees tomorrow. That's after that frontal passage. 40 Thursday morning. But rodeo day when things get underway, 72. Not bad. We get another front Thursday night. This one packs a little more of a punch temperature wise 58 Friday, but it's windy Friday morning, so it's going to be chilly temperatures in the 30s gusty winds wind chill values will be likely in the 30s, maybe even 20s Friday morning, something to watch. And then Saturday morning, we're down to 32, uh, but up to 60 Saturday will be a great day. More clouds move in on Sunday, maybe a couple sprinkles, and then we add back in some rain chances by Monday of next week. Remember that long sleeve sweater dress you have? Mm -hmm. Friday. 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 Yeah, we'll That's save it for then. Yeah. Okay, sounds mm -hmm. good. <laughs> Thank Ta you. Okay, Valentine's Day is a week from today. Did you know you can send a Valentine's Day card to a child at the Children's Hospital of San Antonio? So being in the hospital isn't fun for anyone, but especially children. So you can help brighten their day by sending in a Valentine's Day card. So you could choose from four cards and it will be delivered with a small gift next week. You can find more information about how to take part in this on our website at kset.com. Glad you're with us this morning right now, 919, 67 degrees. And our Tiffany Huertas joins us now with a look at what's coming up next. Good morning. There's a new exhibit in downtown that is focusing on the history of quilting in the African American community. The stories behind these quilts next. To learn more about the Black American heritage of quilting, the UTSA Institute of Texan Cultures is opening a brand new exhibit. Tiffany Huertas is live with a look at the different stories you can see in this exhibit. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning. To celebrate Black History Month, they have this new exhibit here at ITC. And check it out. Look at this incredible quilt. There's a lot of history and a lot of different ideas and stories behind them. We have Liz with ITC. Good morning, Liz. Tell us about this new exhibit. 
Good morning. This exhibit is part of two new updates to the African American Gallery. It's titled The Fabric of People Black Quilting in Texas. And we have two quilts behind us. One is inside the sharecropper cabin. We have bonnets and parasols. Which, and the second is, African Ameri uh, is the Texas of African American History. And we have Denise and Deborah with African American Quilt Circle of San Antonio. Good morning to both of you. We're looking at the quilt that y'all made. Tell me about this one. Well, this particular quote, the, the Texas story, tells the story of Texas starting from the first slave going all the way down to our uh, previous mayor, Ivy Taylor. And within it, we try to tell the good and the bad about Texas. So uh, how it started, uh, the different counties, uh, as many of you all well know, Texas is basically prominent in making in, in growing cotton and so that's a reflection of that but also we reflect the slavery uh, that helped to form Texas uh, as it is today so there's a lot of symbolism on here uh, there are pieces of history that we hope others will look up and get more information uh, because of being sparked by seeing this quilt and Denise what does it mean for you all to have this here oh it is a pleasure to have our quilt here at the, uh, the Institute because it helps to show the African Americans contribution to the quilt quilting uh, world. Many years uh, black quilters were not recognized for either their skill or what they did in the quilt industry and so having our quilts here is an honor. And Deborah, it's a lot of work behind these quilts, right? Oh my gosh, yes. Uh, from the designing of, first you have to do the research. Then, of course, you have to design the quilt. And there were many hands involved in putting this piece together, uh, which was a blessing in itself, because it's something that you don't want to tackle by yourself. But in doing so, you learn a lot. Uh, you, you reinforce your technique. You get, you get to learn more about the history of Texas. Uh, even though I'm not from Texas originally, that doesn't stop me from trying to learn about the area that I live in. And that was a big blessing in itself. So it's a mix of art and culture and education at the same time. Yes, well, definitely. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, we'll keep talking and we're going to bring you more of this exhibit coming up on the noon show. We'll send it back to you. Sounds good. Thank you, Tiffany. Right now, 926, 67 degrees. There is more ahead on GMSA at 9. Including what to know if you're planning on buying tickets for Beyonce's Renaissance Tour. Everyone watching Ticketmaster to make sure another Taylor Swift fiasco doesn't happen again. But before that, our Q&A with the medical director of the Methodist Hospital Burn and Reconstructive Center. She's going to talk about the importance of National Burn Awareness Week and what to do if you or someone around gets burned. Just about 9.30, more than 400,000 people in the U.S. are treated for burn injuries every year, and the majority of these injuries are preventable. This week is National Burn Awareness Week, which highlights the importance of preventing burn hazards and home fires. This year, the focus is on scalds, which are injuries from hot liquids or steam, such as bath water, hot coffee, and even microwave soup. Scald burns are the second leading cause of all burn injuries. And joining us right now live to talk more about this is Dr. Chandra Ellis with the Methodist Hospital Burn and Reconstructive Center. Good morning, Dr. Ellis. Good morning to all. Morning. And first off, what are some ways to prevent scalds from happening? Well, first, when we think about scald injuries, it's one of the leading cause of injury to children for, for in the burn spectrum. So we want to make sure that our teas and coffees are away from the edge of the counter, especially for our cruisers two years and younger. For our, we get a lot of soup burns in our seven, eight, nine-year-olds. That microwave can make soup and oil very hot. So we wanna make sure that we give it a chance to sit before we take it out, that the microwave is positioned so that it's not over the head of a child taking out a bowl that's very hot and perhaps adding a piece of ice to that soup so that it is, so that we decrease the risk of injury. That's a common sense idea. All right, so Dr. Ellis, <laughs> remind us of the difference between first, second, and third degree burns, and would, when should you seek medical, medical care? Yes, uh, we've all had a burn. That's what I start when I, when I talk to my patients, but obviously some are deeper than others. A first degree burn is typically, you're going to have some redness or in darker skin people, you might have just a deeper pigment, but it will feel 
warm. It will be very tender. And a second degree burn, that's where you get your blisters. The burns are deeper into the skin. And so you really want to seek help when you have blisters in any part of the body because those areas can get infected. The skin is our first line of defense against the world. It's the largest organism. Uh, it's our largest largest organ on our body, and it protects us from the world. And in Texas, protects us from bacteria. So once you have those blisters, bacteria can get in, and the wounds can get infected. A third degree burn means that the entire skin, the whole thickness of the skin, is burned. And in some areas, they can heal on their own if they're very, very small. But typically, typically, you will need surgery for those kinds of burns. And what type of care does the Methodist Hospital Burn and Reconstructive Center provide? So here at Methodist, our practice, Premier Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery, treats all burns and many soft tissue disorders from first degree to even deeper injuries, house fires, scald burns from day, I think the, the smallest person I've treated was one month old until 98 years old. So we treat all age spectrums. All right, Dr. Chandra Ellis with Methodist Hospital Burn and Reconstructive Center. Thank you so much for talking to us this morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Dr. Ellis. All right, folks, if you'd like to learn more about this, there is a community health fair taking place this weekend at the Wesley Health and Wellness Center on the southwest side. It'll be from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday. The Methodist Hospital Burn and Reconstructive Center team will be out there to share burn education and resources, and anyone is welcome to stop by. And let's look out there with a live cam. 68 degrees, so I wouldn't say it's cold at all, but we are expecting some rain. We are. That'll kick in later today and especially tonight. You look at these temperatures, it's uh, it's February 7th. That's what the calendar tells us, but it does not feel like it at all. It is warm and humid out there this morning. Lots of clouds, too. Take a look at this picture. It's kind of eerie on our KSAC Connect. I love it, though. The calm before the storm. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, cloudy skies. Uh, I'm assuming this was taken this morning. Not sure, but a uh, beautiful shot nonetheless with the uh, tree there. We appreciate it. Keep sending them in. If you get some shots of your rain gauge by tonight into tomorrow with some rain in it, send it in too. We'd love to see what, how much rain you got where you are. Pollen count is in. Molds. Molds may be giving you an issue this morning. 2,470. They're in the high category. Mountain cedar is low at 90. Ash is low. Hopefully we're on the backside of mountain cedar season. It did come down from where it was yesterday. Right now, a lot of clouds out there. We don't expect to see much sun today. 67. The current reading at the airport. 71 Pleasanton. 65 Bandera. 66 out in Uvalde and cloudy there. Rain chances slowly ramp up today by noontime. 30% chance for close to 70. Temperatures won't move. Uh, around uh, 71 for a high, but rain chances, there they are, 50% at 5 o'clock. We're up close to 60 or even 70% by tonight as a frontal boundary moves in. We'll talk more about that, the timing, how much rain, and the threat for a couple strong storms, too. That's coming up here in just a few minutes. Justin, thank you very much. Quick look at traffic at 935. No accidents to report via text dot right now. We have some stalled vehicles out there. Don't see any of them right here, but they're only blocking one lane in wherever they are occurring. And the Spurs hit a speed bump at the start of the rodeo road trip. David is back to joining us now. Also, RJ Marquez to talk Spurs at a rough fourth quarter up in the windy city of Chicago. Ooh, was it a speed bump or a pothole? <laughs> both. You Sink, know what? Both at Sinkhole. Sink yeah. Sink hole. <laughs> okay, so you, you mentioned the yeah. fourth quarter, right? Yep. Okay, so in the third quarter, it was 83-79 Spurs with 3.09 left in the third. It was 83-83 tied mm -hmm. with 2.05 left in the third. Yeah. 128 to 104 was the final. Man, uh, brutal Jeez. there. It was, yeah, in fact, uh, 85 up with uh, less than a minute left in the third quarter. And then uh, Chicago just went on a run that lasted through, I think at some point they were up by about 25 points on San yeah. Antonio midway through the fourth. But uh, yeah, not, not, not great here. Not a good fourth quarter at all for our Spurs. They miss Trey Jones and they miss Jeremy Sohan. <laughs> they definitely do. Two guys that are out with injuries <laughs> and they miss some other guys. They miss Devin Vassell. 
really You know what? It's really interesting bad. that you brought him up, David, because he tweeted yesterday that he basically saying that he just wants to be out on the court. He just wants to play ball, which begs the question, what is going on with Devin Vassell? The last we heard about him was that he was having this arthroscopic knee procedure uh -huh. and have not heard anything since. He's been on the injury report, has not played. I, I don't know if we're going to see him again for the rest of the season, but he's definitely been missed. Wow. Yeah, he has. Yeah. And there's, a, there's that Euro step. You know what that <laughs> DeMar reminds me of? DeMar DeRozan. You know what that reminds me of? I'm, I'm going way off, off the tracks here, but uh -oh. I'm not. No, I don't need. No, I don't get that in the box today. But if you go back, remember how we were listed all of, up, up in arms about LeBron James and that foul call that wasn't yes. called at the end uh -huh. of the boss of yes. and Go back and look and see how many steps he takes before the foul happens. That stuff doesn't count, David. Don't be crazy. Yeah. Come just on. Go back and look. I, I dare anyone to just go back and look and see how many yeah. steps. Okay. Three. Tell Three. Okay. okay. He go. traveled. <laughs> right. Oh, they showed it, it again the other night. night. Yes, even at the lower yeah. levels of basketball. They, yeah. they showed it again the other night, and I went, well, you know, he didn't deserve the foul call because yeah. he strolled down oh, the lane. It should also be know. noted that David is pacing himself here, so this does not qualify no. as a soapbox. Yeah. No, no, definitely not. Um, well, this is a nine-game road trip. What do you care? I can't go well, off on the game <laughs> one. Give it some time here. Okay, so Spurs, speaking of nine games, they've now lost nine straight games. Oh. And 14 of their last 15 games. But, David, <laughs> yes, we just looked at the standings right before we went yeah. on. And we were like, you know what? We're in the bottom three. <laughs> that gives us the best percentage to I get the that. number one draft pick. I hate that. In next so year's bad. draft. I know. It is not. A, it's a little bit of a silver lining there for the Black Which Kings. is why we might not see Devin Vassell for the Which rest of the season. Which is why I don't think we're going to see Devin Vassell. Yeah. We also may see the end of Yaka Pertle in yeah. San Antonio oh, this man. week. Maybe Josh Richardson, Doug McDermott. Trade uh, deadline is Thursday, so that is something that uh, so this to keep in mind. Could be an active week, yeah. huh? RJ? Yeah. Are the Mavericks the best team in the West? Ooh, Ooh. now, now, now I mean, with Kyrie. Uh, I still say Denver. No, I think Denver's still the best. I still best. say Denver's the best. I think Denver's, Denver's still the team to beat. So, well, no, Kyrie and Irving and <laughs> yeah, and Luke. I mean, how are those two guys going to get along? Who gets the ball? Uh, good question. And how long will Kyrie Irving, you know, kind of be on the yeah. street? <laughs> so. That's the biggest question with Kyrie is, uh, you know, he's a little bit of a – he tends to go off the off a little bit there. So, <laughs> You know what the best part about that trade? Yeah. He did not go to L.A. because LeBron James wanted him in L.A. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Ah, too bad about you, LeBron. Well, I heard yeah. that that was prevented. The yeah. Nets owner, yes, yes. reportedly did not want to, want to go to the grant Lakers. Kyrie's wishes to send him back to the Lakers. Or yeah. send well, sure, him to but in the Lakers. That's, what, yeah. that's what LeBron wanted, so, so he kind of stuck it to yeah. LeBron. So Kyrie's in Dallas now, and get yeah. your popcorn ready. Yeah, <laughs> be, it'll, be, um, it'll be very interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as far as our guys are concerned, we do continue the rodeo road trip uh, tomorrow night. It is at Toronto, and uh, yeah, hopefully we could get a win here. But uh, yeah, this has been a tough start so far to the, to the trip, David. And who's from Toronto on our team? I mean, not from Toronto, but who played for Toronto? Ooh, I don't know. That's a good question. Wait, Jakob did. Jakob. Just, Jakob okay. played so for the could Raptors. Jakob be back staying in Toronto? Uh, well, after that the is whole one trade destination. I was thinking that they DeRozan. I was like, wait a yeah. minute, he's not with us yeah. After the whole DeMar Kawhi <laughs> thing, yeah. I kind of blanked yeah. out. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. RJ. Yeah. No, yeah, Jakob's been, yeah, Jakob was part of that trade okay. initially. Oh. Um, and uh, it, that would be a tough loss. Jakob's definitely Ooh. developed into a really solid big man, but... He's on the last year of his deal, so the Spurs are going to have to figure some things well, out. And, you, and both you guys have talked about Yaka being probably our top mm -hmm. trade bait because there's yeah. a lot of big men uh, necessity throughout the league right now. And, yeah. and Pop's history has always been if he's got a guy that's a veteran mm -hmm. that may be looking to have an opportunity to get deep into the playoffs, sometimes if, if it's advantageous to the Spurs mm -hmm. to make that trade, they'll make that trade just to get a guy a, a chance because obviously they're not going anywhere this year and may, maybe not next year. So, you know, maybe Jakob is, is the guy that say, hey, you know, yep. you can get on a, yep. on a, on a contender. <laughs> well, next we'll season. That's what we're saying, right? We're next, going to our next, next season. season. Right. Yeah. Next season. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Just keep yeah. repeating after me. Bottom three. Bottom, Bottom three. three. Wow. <laughs> He's finally come over. Wow. Wow. Race for Might as well. <laughs> Race for say sounded Race so much better than yeah. bottom <laughs> three. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Man, oh, that's, that, Man. That is, that's Whew. a good point. We went from race for say to the bottom three. Race for tres. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, we're getting around. Oh, yeah, we got to go. Luck. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, I'll see you after the we're next We're going to work game. on our branding here. <laughs> yes. RJ, David, thank you, guys. Yes. Thank 941, 68 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And tickets for Beyonce's Renaissance Tour started going on sale yesterday. When we come back, how Ticketmaster is planning on handling the high demand after the Taylor Swift fiasco. Plus, what to know about ticket scams.
Did you ever have Rooney do that? No, but I wish we would have. She's a little big now, but yeah. she would still enjoy it. <laughs> Probably so. Very cute. Well, Queen Bee fans are buzzing with excitement as tickets for her Renaissance tour started going on sale yesterday. But there are growing concerns about both concert scams and another potential ticket master fiasco like the one involving Taylor Swift tour tickets, tickets back in the fall. Sarah Costa explains how to protect your money when buying tickets for Beyonce's tour or any other live concert this year. All eyes on Ticketmaster as Beyonce's Renaissance Tour tickets went on sale yesterday for the first group of verified fans. And with desperate and eager fans taking to crowdfunding sites to raise money for the much anticipated concert, the Better Business Bureau says scams are very likely, so beware before you buy into the frenzy. They're ignoring the red flags because they just want to get those tickets and scammers are taking advantage of that. Meanwhile, lawmakers in Washington are bracing for a possible repeat of the Taylor Swift presale fiasco on Ticketmaster that left countless fans empty handed and triggered a Senate hearing on the issue. The Senate Judiciary Committee tweeting at Ticketmaster, we're watching. First of all, there were fewer tickets to satisfy the demand. So that starts with problem. Ticketmaster says demand to register for a chance to buy tickets exceeded the number of available tickets by more than 800 percent, but says it's taking new measures to avoid another debacle, saying it will use verified fan technology to make sure more tickets go to fans and not resellers. Here's what the BBB recommends to avoid scams. One, only purchase from venues or legitimate sellers on their actual websites. Avoid buying on social media and verify trustworthy resellers and vendors on BBB.org. Two, watch out for fake websites. You think you're on Ticketmaster's website, but you really aren't. They'll copy and paste the same pictures and they'll just change the words of the name of the company by one or two letters in the URL. Three, only use protected payment methods. Don't pay cash debit or wire transfer and opt for a credit card instead since it may be easier to dispute those fraudulent charges. Sarah Costa, KSA 12 News. Thank you, Sarah. All right, Renaissance Tour ticket sales continue today and tomorrow for city card members. General verified fan ticket sales begin on Saturday. Good luck. And due to overwhelming demand, a third Texas show has added to the tour. She will be in Dallas on September 21st and then in Houston on September 23rd and 24th. That's a Saturday, Sunday, by the way. You can find more information on KSET.com. So you've already made I an attempt? I tried. I thought. For Houston, right? Yeah, for Houston, yeah. because I last week I thought I had registered to be a fan, but I guess I needed to do more steps, and I, did, sure. <laughs> I forgot about it, and, and then I tried, and they were like, nope, you're not a verified okay. fan. So Let's ask Jeff. Do you have a city card we can? Are you oh, yeah. Uh, I do, <laughs> <He's> but, like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> there goes that idea. Sounds expensive. Uh, uh, no, uh, I'll Venmo you. Okay. <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll talk okay, about it. We'll okay, see. Okay. okay. Uh, it is exciting, though. This tour is going to draw in a lot of folks. Mm -hmm. Let's hope the ticket sales go well. Uh, let's first uh, go outside now. When we're talking weather here, we're going to see some showers today, maybe a few storms as we get into tonight. So some encouraging news on the weather front. We're hoping we can get some good rain out of this next system. Right now, we're sitting at 68 degrees, already up to 70 at Stinson. That's a warm number for 949 on February 7th. Uh, 68, uh, Kelly 68 at Randolph. We've got a south southeasterly breeze right now at about 10 miles per hour. Here's why we're seeing all this warmth. A lot of moisture getting pulled up into Texas out ahead of this cold front here, the slow moving front, which is made it through San Angelo and Dallas. And there is some cooler air behind it, but this isn't bitter cold. This is not going to be a strong cold front in the sense there. We're going to see a, a huge cool down, but it will help to generate uh, the rain as we had later into today. We've also got an area of low pressure out here to our west. This too will be moving into Texas, so we got all the ingredients we need. Now we just got to put it all together. And uh, hopefully, again, it turns out well for us. So we've got some showers there across parts of Oklahoma, North Texas, a few showers just to our north. But some of this activity is starting to push a little bit further south. So I think by midday, especially by early afternoon, we should start to see a few showers around. We are noticing a few very light returns as you get out into the hill country between Lakey and Rock Springs, but that's probably nothing more than a few sprinkles at this point. Uh, here's what we're thinking for the rest of today. By 3 o'clock, there's some more shower activity going on here, so we'll up our rain chances to 40%. By 7 p.m., 
Doesn't show a whole lot, but I think the radar will be a little bit more active at this point as our front is drawing just a little bit closer. So 60% chance this evening. Our best opportunity probably lies in time frame, I'd say about 9 to midnight as our front comes through. That gives us good lift, right? And we've got showers and maybe even a few thunderstorms along this front, 70% at that point. Uh, as the front moves through, we'll still get some activity behind it. This is 5 a.m. Wednesday. Still can see a few showers and some rumbles of thunder. And as you head off to work and school tomorrow, still some showers around. So it's going to be a little bit wet uh, tomorrow morning for the commute. Keep that in mind. Send the kids maybe with an umbrella. They won't need it all day, though, because by midday, things are starting to quiet down. And then actually the clouds clear out by dinner time tomorrow. And we'll see the sun pop back out, especially on Thursday. The severe risk with this, it is there, but it's small and it's mainly to our east. So places like Gonzales, Howitzville, Cuero, maybe Carn City. There could be one or two strong storms here, gusty winds, maybe some hail. But I think the threat overall is pretty low. Uh, even here in San Antonio, I just don't think we're going to see much at all uh, severe weather wise. But if something does pop up, we'll be here to let you know. Rainfall wise, biggest numbers are going to be up here along I-35 north of us around an inch, maybe around Austin. San Antonio, I would say half an inch to an inch and then lower amounts as you get out to the west. So uh, decent numbers, not huge, but decent. 60 tomorrow once we get some clearing late in the day. 72 Thursday down to 37 Friday morning as the front comes through and it's windy and chilly Friday morning. We're only up to 58 on Friday. And that next run actually packs a little more of a punch temperature wise. Uh, 64 Sunday that brings some sprinkles and we may see some more showers and storms by the time we get into Monday. But I pay close attention to the case that weather app because temperatures are going to be variable next seven days. Uh, so you want to make sure you're aware of what's going on and change on a dime so we can be prepared. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Justin. Yep. Thank you, Justin. Right now, 952, 68 degrees. We'll be right back. OK, tomorrow on GMSA at 9, Science with Sarah is back. Sarah Spivey and David Sears will be out at Harmony School of Innovation making balloon thermometers with fourth grade students. So tune in for that tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Thermometers. Adam's going to be tuning in for that one. And just yeah. when you thought balloons was out of the news. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK, uh, we've got some showers this afternoon, some more showers and storms tonight. Actually, a pretty decent chance. I think most of it's going to be after sunset and maybe leaking over into tomorrow morning. So be prepared for a wet commute. Uh, but we will get some clearing late on Wednesday. It does cool down some 72 Thursday for the rodeo. Looks good there and then turning cooler and windy on Friday. All right, don't forget that Weather Authority app. Great yep. way to track showers in your neighborhood. Yep. Comes in handy. It Thanks, does. Justin. Have a good day, guys.